Hello again, this is the second video of the Writing Better Science series, and in this episode we are going to focus on hypothesis and the method. The hypothesis is simply an educated guess that you can test um, that will direct the parameters that you will be using for your experimental investigation. The general form is this, if, then. That is, if the independent variable is increased or decreased, then the dependent variable will increase or decrease. If you haven't already written about your predictions in the introduction just prior, then it would probably be a good idea to add a third component to your hypothesis. If, then, because. If the boiling duration of the river water is increased, then the quantity of surviving organisms in the water will decrease because the increased kinetic energy of the boiling begin to denature the proteins within the organism's cells. This is optional. Some teachers like it, some teachers do not. So make sure to check. Hypotheses aren't usually a problem for junior science students, where the investigation is very scaffolded for you. But for senior science students, this can really make or break your assignment. In senior science, you may be given the freedom to choose the variables that you'll be testing and how you'll be testing them. The biggest mistake that students make is choosing variables which are not quantifiable. For example, if the color of light exposure to the orange peel is changed, then the orange peel will decay at different rates. In that example, there is no way to quantify what each color is being applied, what wavelength of light that is, at least not with readily available high school science instruments. Nor is the rate of decay easily quantified. You will have to be doing qualitative statements and observations such as uh, still okay, um, starting to rot, and completely rotten. This is going to give you limited data that is not meaningful to work with for your results and your discussion. The other mistake that students make is to pick far too many variables. This increases your work exponentially as you will have to add an additional test for every incremental change that you do. If you don't, then you will find that your data trends tend to be quite obscured. Or even worse, you might only have time to collect very few data points, which makes making trend lines very difficult or very inaccurate. Unless your teacher specified uh, to pick two or more variables, stick to one and do that one well. The most common an obvious mistake that students make when writing methods is writing it like a cooking recipe or a cookbook. This makes no sense when you're writing a report. A report is about an experiment that has already happened. Now listen to how ridiculous this sounds when you report about it as if you were writing a cooking recipe. Add a bank robber to a bank. Make the robber hold the cashier and bystanders at gunpoint. Make the robber demand for cash and valuables and exit the building as quickly as possible. This kind of language sticks out like a sore thumb to science teachers, and it's very different from the rest of the paper, which it shouldn't be. It should be exactly the same language as you write everything else in the paper. There are three guidelines to help force you to write in the correct language. First one is avoid the use of any personal pronouns. These are nouns that refer to a person. He, she, I, our, we, and you. Write in past tense. Remember that these steps have already taken place. Things like, instead of writing, add a teaspoon of sugar to coffee, write it instead as, a teaspoon of sugar was added to the coffee. Use passive voice. These are things like, was added, was transferred, were measured, and was filled. The next point about writing methods is that students forget to include a diagram. A diagram of your apparatus is the biggest tool that you can use to reduce your word count and make your paper more concise. Another way to make things more concise is to combine simple steps into a single sentence. These simple steps will be things like, step one, a beaker of mixed salt solutions was prepared. Uh, step two, the salt solution was then boiled for five minutes. And step three, the precipitate formed was then filtered through filter paper. You can combine steps one and two because they're relatively quite simple. So that would become a beaker of mixed salt solutions was prepared and boiled for five minutes. Step two, the resulting precipitate formed was then filtered through filter paper. 
Well, that's it for this video. Um, I didn't get to the results section in, the, in this video, but that will be coming up in the next episode. Let me know if you found this helpful and you can write it somewhere on the YouTube channel, that would be excellent, or you can leave a comment on my website, anglesandacid.com.